Hey, and welcome to the State of Tech Podcast, recorded live at the Soda Conference, December 6, 2011. And this episode is number six, Gadgets. I'm Sean Beavers, and I'm always joined by my two cohorts, Eric Griffith and Eric Kurse. Eric, how are you doing today? Great, man. How are you? You know, I am fabulous. I would be more fabulous if I was actually eating some of that delicious Italian meal downstairs right now, but uh, yeah. we got to do it for the fans. That's right. It's all about fans. And uh, Eric Kurtz uh, is going to be joining us here in a second. How are you doing today? Hey, I'm here as well. Sorry, I was standing behind the camera. We are such a sophisticated operation that we can't afford somebody to turn a camera for us. So I was behind the camera, but yes, Eric Kurtz from North Canton City Schools. Glad to be here uh, with you guys today, having a great time. And uh, for those that uh, normally um, watch the podcast, this is a little different. But if you've never seen us before, I hope you enjoyed this one. But I do want you to know what we're doing here today is very different than our normal approach. Typically, it is something where uh, we're each in our own locations with headphones and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, hey, we were at the Soyda Conference. Sure. We had a great opportunity to do this. So we're trying something a little different, an on-location camera-type podcast uh, for you. And uh, so we're excited about that. And I don't think there's ever been such a gathering of nerds in this space before, really. <laughs> I'm afraid that that's going to open up a interdimensional portal. Yeah, I just uh, I just got a I checked my RSS feed, and apparently the Saturn and the stars and the moon uh, they all have a line. So I don't know. It might be Black Friday again. I have to check. You better so. load up on your zombie killing attire. That's right. Yeah. But we do want to let you know uh, that we're, ta again, talking about gadgets. We have Leslie Fisher with us today, who's going to be talking about some of her favorite gadgets. And each one of us brought some of ours into our makeshift studio. So hopefully you'll enjoy those and uh, get a kick out of this episode. Thanks. And in the news for this episode, um, we really only have one item to uh, mention. Um, if you're planning on attending the 2012 uh, Ohio Education Technology Conference, the eTech uh, Tech Conference in Columbus. That's from February 13th through the 15th. If you're planning on attending that and you haven't registered yet, you're in luck for just a few more days. They have extended the early bird registration that saves you about 20% on the cost of the conference. They've only extended it through this Friday, December 9th. So if you're listening to this podcast shortly after we release this, you're going to be pretty close to the deadline, but hopefully you're hearing this early enough to still sneak in and get your registration in while you can save some time. It's a great conference. Like uh, Sean and Eric and I said, we're at the Soita Educational Conference uh, recording this and uh, really enjoying that opportunity. We will likewise be at the eTech Conference in Columbus doing a live podcast recording as well as presenting a lot of things there as well. It's a great conference, and I uh, definitely encourage people to attend that, and I definitely encourage you to get the registration done uh, by December 9th if you can to save a little bit of money. But that's it for our news. All right, well, I'll go ahead and, and share my gadgets, and, and Eric and I kind of fought over the first one. He wanted to share the Apple Apple TV, and I, I beat him in a thumb wrestling match five times out of 50. 50 it was, yes. Yeah. yes. So this is the Apple TV, for those of you who have, have not seen it. It is uh, $99 from Apple, although you can get it from online retailers as well. I think Amazon had it for $90, I think, a couple of weeks ago. Um, but uh, essentially what it is or what it does is allow you to mirror your iPad 2 or your iPhone 4S. Those are the only two devices currently that Apple supports. Um, but once you have this hooked up, you've got it on your Wi-Fi network, you can then mirror everything that you do on your iPad screen uh, to your TV. And so I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that right here. So we're going to take down the, the State of Tech logo. And I'll just. And as a note, I just installed uh, about 13 or 15 of these in my school district, uh, all to brand new printers. Uh, we're, we have an iPad project um, where staff members will have this in their classroom to use. So. Now, a couple of important things to keep in mind besides the Wi-Fi, it is only HDMI. So if you have projectors that have DVI in or RGB, uh, aka VJ, that's going to be a concern. It has to also be high def. So Eric's lucky enough to have. 720p, right? Uh, no, we had to buy all brand new uh, projectors too. So, yeah. Are they 720p? They are. Yeah. So 720p, not 480i, not 480p. Uh, won't work on a tube TV or a gramophone if that's what you're trying to connect it to. So don't use any of those devices. So high def projector, HDMI in, and this is what you'll see. So as soon as you uh, plug it in, you've got it on the same Wi-Fi network as your iPad. You can mirror everything that you're doing, and it works really, really well. 
Now, one of the issues I've run into, there are some apps that have that built-in screen mirroring, and they don't work very well. You'll see you know, maybe your presentation or you'll see your image and not the actual app interface or the user interface, um, but that's few and far between. But it really is, is great and um, you know, it just works. You know, besides being able to do the mirroring like what I'm doing now, you can also use it for uh, YouTube videos and also do Netflix. And I know people are thinking Netflix, you know, what, why would I want to have that in the classroom? But there is a lot of great, you know, documentaries and content on Netflix. So it's not, you know, you're not just spending your 99 bucks on, uh, on just the mirroring. One of our staff members uh, used it to watch Mythbusters in the classroom and they had a lesson. So yeah, very useful Netflix is. And, and, and the thing that I like about it is you're not tied down or tethered to your, your desk or you don't have to be plugged into a cord. The teacher can theoretically, you know, walk around the classroom. Um, since it's Wi-Fi, it's, there's no, you know, 30-foot radius like Bluetooth. And they can pass it to a student. The student can, can use it. And if you have classroom sets of these or even if you have a couple of them, you know, students can even just use the AirPlay feature and share their photos and videos. So for 99 bucks, I think it's, it's tough to beat. Yep. Uh, all right, and I'll move on to my second gadget. My second gadget, these are iHome capsule speakers, and actually my wife got these for me. When I, that's how I first heard about them. They carried them in the Apple store. And uh, I laughed when I first saw them. I was like, seriously, you know, what, what am I going to do with these? Um, but they are extremely uh, loud. They will fill a, a room, not, not a concert hall, but a, a good-sized room. You can pop them up to increase the bass uh, or pop them down if you want to decrease the amount of bass. They charge over USB, so you can plug them right into your computer to recharge, um, and they really do sound wonderful, so I'll go ahead and hook these up and, and give Eric and Eric a, a, a full demo here. But I've used these many, many times for presentations when the sound, house sound or the speakers at the location have been pretty poor, and, and they, they work wonderful. And these are still available. Uh, they'll be linked in our show notes. They have a newer version of these. They go for around $50. Um, but a great stocking, stucker, stocking stuffer uh, for your, your geek or geeks. And uh, go ahead and turn these on. Interesting side note, Sean also used those as part of his Princess Leia Halloween costume. So I did. I, I actually did. That's, that's right. So um, they, are, they are perfect for that. So let's put on a little music here. Um. So for those of you who are listening to the podcast or viewing it, may not seem that loud, but uh, right now our ears are actually bleeding. Um, so we're going to have to pause this and actually get them off. But just take it uh, from us that they are producing some pretty crystal clear sound. What? Yeah, what? I can't hear you. Yeah, unbelievable. So anyway, those are my two gadgets, the Apple TV. And again, that's $99. You can get it from a variety of outlets. And then also the iHome capsule speakers. And I'm going to turn things over to Eric, and he's going to share his gadgets with you. And actually, what we're going to do is, when I snap my fingers, Sean and I will switch seats. And there we are. Through the amazing power of video editing, we've amazingly, miraculously... We're switching, yeah, we beamed across that's this room. To exactly what seats. it was. Yeah. Through the Apple TV, too. Even though poor Wi-Fi uh, is not... That's one of those Easter egg features, though. We didn't, it is, we didn't yeah. share that. Thank you, Steve. Awesome job. Um, anyway... My favorite gadget is multiple monitors, and if you've ever seen my office, uh, you know, in the last episode, I had two monitors um, of the four you could actually see uh, mounted up on my, my wall there. So uh, for the longest time, you know, you had to put in a video card um, to get an, an additional monitor. And, you know, if you're not really wanting to take that step, you know, pry open a PC and put the video card in there, you could do it on the cheap with, um, with SIG. Um, SIG actually makes a... USB to VGA monitor out. So what it does is it creates a secondary video card or a secondary video or a secondary monitor through USB. And as you can see here, um, it allows for cloning. You know, it's the same as if you would plug in a laptop. You know, it's going to show what's on your laptop and up on the projector. Or you can do dual screen. So it's like an extended desktop. That runs anywhere between, I've seen it as low as $45 and $65. And we have links to the show notes there on that. Um, I had to show, uh, you know, my ultimate workspace um, of, you know, six monitors. Actually, that's not true. My wife would kill me if I had. I think you actually took that image from the Death Star. Yes, that is. Uh, Vader was just off into the distance. We really couldn't see it there. But that's uh, my favorite gadget is, you know, adding multiple monitors. And there are so many things you can do um, with, the mul with multiple monitors. Um, you know, productivity-wise, I know Eric Kurtz has three monitors. 
Sean's just got. I, the I, I fly still. I have a solo monitor. Yeah. But uh, I do like, aspire to have multiple monitors. But it's like 24, 27 inches. 24. 24. Let's not get away. Okay. Let's not get carried away. Okay. Okay. So my other gadget, actually, I did bring it here, is uh, and my wife got this for me. It's the uh, iPad case or keyboard case for the iPad. It's pretty neat. Um, it actually connects via Bluetooth, and it makes it into a nice little travel uh, accessory. Uh, I can't type very fast on it because the keys are rubber, and I've actually been encouraging my staff members to practice you know, using their thumbs when they type. But when I first started out with the original iPad, this was a great accessory. Again, it's a Bluetooth keyboard. Um, the battery on it lasts forever. It was probably still the first charge from the first time I opened it up. But great device. I think you got that from ThinkGeek, didn't you? Yep, ThinkGeek was one of the first to sell them, and now they're available everywhere, Amazon, eBay. Uh, for very cheap, between thirty and forty bucks. So, and I like this a lot better, honestly, than the Apple keyboard. I think because again, it's all in one. You don't have to carry something separate. Yep. And you know, plus it's your case. It protects the iPad. Yep. So awesome. Looks very executive too. So, you know, typing on the screen. We're, you know, some people just don't feel comfortable doing that yet. So this is a great alternative and a great, uh, you know. Holiday gift. I was going to say, especially if they're transitioning from a typewriter to the iPad, there's, exactly. there's a learning curve there. So. <laughs> exactly. Thanks. All right. Well, over uh, to me for my uh, gadgets for this episode. Uh, first one I'm going to talk about is a projector. Uh, I'm going to be talking about the Casio um, LED projectors. There's, there's a lot of them. Uh, the particular model I'm holding here is the... XJA155V, but there's lots of different. The, the important thing is to know I'm talking about Casio LED. Now, this is also the green slim model, which is a little thinner. You mentioned you had seen one that was a little bit more normal size. Sure. Not really a giant price difference between them. Actually, the green slims were running cheaper when we got these than the other ones were. Um, but let me explain why I'm just so excited about this projector. Um, I know I've said it a million times. We don't have a lot of money in our district, so anytime you buy something, it's got to be um, a really well thought out purchase that's going to last a long time. And a lot of the things that we buy, we're not buying with our normal tech budget. It's because oh, we got a grant, or oh, we you know had some extra money from the Coke machine. Seriously, you know the principal's fund had some more money, or um, it was a PTO purchase, and the, that's wonderful. Don't get me wrong. Thank you, thank you so much, PTO, and all that. But there's a flip side to that. If it dies, if it, if it breaks, if the bulb needs replaced, and you don't have the funding source to replace the bulb because it was special money that got this in the first place, then what you end up with is a projector hanging from the ceiling with no bulb in it and no money to replace the bulb. And so those are concerns that I have. And, and we did get a lot of projectors early on um, that really were expensive. I mean, the bulb, the, the projectors were cheap, but the bulbs were $400 for a bulb. I and mean, it's like, whoa, whoa, I know that was great that that came with this grant, but my gosh, it's like uh, HP with their printers. You know, the printer is free and the ink costs, you know, the money. So um, we went for a long time trying to find projectors that had low-cost bulbs, and we thought we did a really good job. We got down to the point where we were finding bulbs around $150, and so we'd only buy those kind of projectors. Um, but even then, I was so happy to finally come across this. And I've been hearing about this for years. They had rumored there will be bulbless projectors coming out. They kept talking about that. And finally they came out, and Casio did it. This is an LED projector, so it does not have a traditional bulb inside of this. It's using LEDs instead. And because of that, it will you will never replace a bulb in this. I mean, when it eventually dies, that's it. I mean, that's... No, maybe there's something magic they can do to it. But here's the key. Casio projectors, the bulb, or whatever's in it, the LEDs, are rated at 20,000 hours of use. A normal projector is 2,000 to 3,000, depending on if you're in economy mode or not. So most people, probably 2,000 hours. Now, if you take a regular school, and let's say a teacher were to use this eight hours a day, 180 days a year, 185 days a year, whatever normal school year is, that, that means 20,000 hours would last just over 17 years. Wow. Now, that is an investment. That's great. That means barring other mechanical failure in this, which can happen to anything, at least I don't have to worry about this bulb until, until I'm retired. <laughs> hey, I'm going to be gone before these are. How about that? Woohoo! 
<laughs> so, um, because I only have about 15 years left, so there you go. Okay, anyway, because um, I'm old. Um, but so w what's exciting about this is that we can make that investment. We can say, I'm mounting this in your room, and forget about it. It's going to be there, hopefully, for 20,000 hours. Now, cost. Yes, it does cost a little bit more. These, the price has varied, and, and a lot has been because of the natural disasters we had earlier this year with Japan and so forth. It has really inflated prices on everything. But in general, just under $800 is about what you're looking at for this particular model I've got. Um, somewhere in that range. And by the way, this model, uh, they are ready for round two. So you probably aren't going to find this exact model I'm talking about here. Start of the year, Casio is supposed to be releasing their whole new batch of these. So there'll be new model numbers and, and new features and new things like that. Um, but about $800. And uh, what you get for that is, of course, the 20,000 hour bulb bulbless projector, but you can get lots of different things like um, it can be widescreen or it can be standard res or, st or standard ratio. Um, it can be um, 2,000 lumens, 2,500 lumens, 3,000 lumens. It can be wireless or not. All those features will increase or decrease your overall price for that. Um, but when you think about in the long term, most projectors are a little bit over $500. Let's say I get a great projector with a great $150 bulb. It only is going to take two bulb replacements, or in essence, about four or five years before this is now paying for itself. You know, over the course of 20,000 hours, I would have had to gone through six or seven bulbs in a normal projector at the cost of another thousand or two thousand dollars on top of it. So I definitely recommend these. Uh, it's a nice bright picture. Um, you are right. I think you mentioned they they, they buzz a little bit, and I, I have noticed that sometimes. I just thought I was losing my hearing or a fly was in my ear or something. But yes, there is a little bit of a buzz to them. Um, we have bought a lot of these. Two of them were bad right out of the box. Hmm. Casio replaced them right away. We wow. sent them in. They sent new ones right out to us. No problem at all. They're great about that. But I definitely can recommend them. If you're looking for an investment, I want to get these data projectors in my classroom and forget about it. Not worry about the ups and downs of the economy. Not worry about budgets drying up you can rest much more assured with something like the Casio LED projectors. And I'm sure many other companies are going to be jumping on the bandwagon. It's not just going to be Casio. So the, the LED technology, I definitely want to say, is a great thing. So uh, that's that. Um, well, I was going to yeah. say, I have a, a question on that. Um, you know, every year, or actually twice a year, I go through and I clean out projectors, you know, blow them out with mm -hmm. a fan and everything like that. Do these have fans inside them? Are they actually blowing? Yes, you also do need to do the same with these. Okay. You know, they, 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 they can be blown out and you should blow them out. Just like any, all technology should get the dust cleaned out of it because it likewise will suck things in. Uh, perhaps, I don't know, it may not be as sensitive to that as some of the other things, but hmm. I can't speak one way or the other on that. But yes, yes, you definitely can. It's got vents all the way around it and you can definitely blow that out as well. There's little Good. fans in there. But uh, so... Really like these guys. Um, my second gadget is a document camera. Now, document cameras are, you know, really something people are very excited about. You're always hearing people talking about document cameras, and I want a document camera for my classroom. And I don't disagree with that. I mean, there's a lot of great educational reasons for having a document camera. But the prices are crazy on these things. I mean, they're 300 400 Now, I know they do lots of awesome things. I, I, I get that. I do understand that. But if I just want a high-resolution camera that's easy to use, to be able to use as a document camera in my class, I would definitely recommend this. This is the IPVO point-to-view document camera. This thing is $69. Okay? Wow. And what you got here is, first of all, a couple key features. One is the resolution. It's 1600 by 1200. And that is critical because if you're using a document camera to read a book to the class, which many elementary teachers will do. They'll put the book down, they'll point the document camera at it, the kids can see it up through the data projector, through their nice LED data projector up on the screen, and they can read along with it, but they can't if it's 480 by something. It's just going to be blurs. 1600 by 1200 crisp, clean letters. You're going to be able to see what it is you're showing. That's critical. It also has a zoom feature you can use through the software or just on the camera as well. And then it also has a, um, uh, a picture taking option. You can just click a button here and it'll take a snapshot and save that back to your computer. Is it autofocus? It has autofocus and manual, so wow. you can choose that. You can turn that on or off, whether you're doing auto or, or, or not. And are you sure it's made by IPVO and not Pixar? 
Yeah, exactly. You know, I kind of wondered that too. It does look like it should be doing. For those who are listening to the audio podcast, come on, get with the video podcast. You get to see these mugs and you get to get the jokes better. I'm sure they're much funnier if you can actually see the jokes. But yes, it does look just like the little Pixar guy here, so now I'm going to be playing with that all day. It has a solid base, so it's nice and solid there. And then it connects by USB. Now, don't forget that this cable isn't like terribly long, so if you do need to extend it uh, to get over to your laptop or computer or whatever, you're probably going to want to use an active USB cable because USB has a limit of 15 feet. You go beyond that and your signal is going to degrade. So using an active USB cable for like 10, 15 bucks or something like that, you can run it another 15 feet if you're running it to the computer in the corner while you're sitting this in the middle of the room. Um, and again, document cameras are great. It's a great way for show and tell. Seriously, kids bring things in, put them in front of the document camera, everybody can see. Great for if you're demonstrating how to do a math problem and you're actually writing it out instead of doing it on a smart board or something. Or reading a book, like I said, you know, bring in a book, bring in pictures, bring in newspaper clippings, whatever it is you want to show, put it under there and the kids can see it. I've done this with my, with my three boys at home. I like to you know, read to them at night and I use a camera to point at the book and put it up on our TV actually because with three little boys in close proximity to each other before bed is bad. They will start touching each other and it will go downhill from there. So I can get them in their beds, have them look at the TV, I can read them the book, they can follow along, see the pictures. It's great at home, it's great for school, it's great for all sorts of things. And you said $69? $69, that is a great price. And if you say, well it doesn't do things like stop action you know, video, which some of them have that built in. I want to show a plant growing over time. No problem. Download um, Cam Studio, the free program. Run this into your computer. Start up Cam Studio. In Cam Studio, tell it to start recording that section of the screen. And then click on the, um, the recording option to do um, the, I don't know what you call it, not stop motion, but where you tell it to take a picture every so often. And that's built right into Cam Studio, free piece of software. Say, I want to take a, a snapshot every hour or every 30 minutes or something like that and let that free software do it for you. So there are ways around that for the features it doesn't have. But what it needs to have, great resolution, solid base, all those nice features, it's a steal. Great. And where can we find it? Just through IPVO, I-P-E-V-O dot com. They make it, they sell it, that's the only place I know to get it. Great. Thanks. All right, I am here live at the Soda Conference with Leslie Fisher. She is an internationally known uh, speaker, tech enthusiast, purveyor of fine wines, and golfer. And she's going to share some awesome gadgets with you today. So, Leslie, I'll let you take it away. Thank you, Sean. Um, I want to talk about two uh, gadgets I absolutely love, and I'm going to keep them app-focused. Uh, the first one is actually something that's, well, they're both handy, but one I think is pretty handy for the classroom uh, and abroad. This is called WordLens, and if you haven't heard about this, it's a free app. You can actually get the app for free. Uh, but what it does, and I'll, I'll hold it up, and this is actually demoing. And what this demo is going to show you is it's taking these, these letters here and it's actually uh, transferring them. They're doing reverse words. But really where this thing shines is that this also does language translation. So I can go Spanish to English, I could even go English to Spanish, and that's when you spend the money. It's ten dollars for each language. But what's so cool about it is I can actually, you know, sit there, uh, you know, looking at a menu and then hold the menu up, and I actually know what the heck I'm ordering, which is which is pretty cool. So, because if I live in Southern California, I don't know what your Spanish population here is, but I live in, in California, and it's uh, very very. Uh, did we lose our? We, we can't lose our three guys. Are they back? Oh, thank goodness. The next one I want to talk about is actually this right here. And this is an interesting thing. This is actually by the makers of Jawbone. And you might know Jawbone from the Bluetooth headsets all over the place. But this is called the Jawbone Up. And what the Jawbone Up is, is this is a pedometer, but it's also a sleep monitor. So what I'm able to do is I wear it. It keeps track of my sleep. It keeps track of my steps. I unplug it right here. I then plug it into my phone. And when I plug it into my phone, there's actually a Jawbone Up app. So when I run the Jawbone Up app, I can now synchronize my band to the, uh, to the app. And it's going to synchronize. And once it's done synchronizing, it's actually going to tell me how I slept last night. It's going to tell me my REM sleep versus my regular sleep. And it's also going to tell me how many steps I've taken. So, so far today, I've already taken 3,295 steps. 
I burned 297 calories and I've walked 1.71 miles. So if, if you're trying to do something like monitor your exercise, calorie intake or whatnot, uh, this thing is awesome. And then also it lets you monitor sleep. So I'm able to know when I'm sleeping light, when I'm sleeping heavy. And isn't this hysterical? The phone starts ringing while I'm showing this. Uh, <laughs> decline. Uh, so it, it's really a cool app and I've, I've noticed just by even wearing it, it's $99. Uh, I'm just being a little bit more focused in making sure that I have uh, done my activity. Another thing it does, uh, I don't know about you, but those mornings I have to wake up disgustingly early. I always hate the loud alarm clock. You can actually set this thing to gently wake you up. The band will actually buzz. And that way, if you say I need to wake up between 7 and 7.30, it will, it will wait for me to hit light sleep. And when it does, it just gently buzzes to, to wake me up. So. I think you were talking about something last night. Isn't there a function where it'll keep track of your, your diet or your calories? Yeah, absolutely. If, if I wanted to, I could, it doesn't do calorie counting yet. The, the, the app, it's kind of silly. It asks you to take pictures of food, and in 30 minutes, it'll ask how you're feeling. So uh, I'm actually teamed it up with another app called Lose It. And Lose It is an app. It's completely free. And from there, I could put in what I had for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I could also put in my exercise. I can tell it if I have a weight loss goal, and it will tell me the general amount of calories I should be eating a day to keep on my goal. And it's really slick because I can go in there, and when I put in, for example, I golfed, it'll let me know that usually that allows me 800 additional calories for the day. So I've been using the Jawbone Up compared with, combined with Lose It, and I'm finding them to be a great one-two punch. Well, thank you very much. You are so welcome. And um, Leslie, uh, her website, I believe, is LeslieFisher.com. It is. She has some other great gadgets uh, she actually shared this morning at our conference, so definitely check it out. Wonderful. Thank you. And I am excited to say we do have some listener feedback um, from uh, the last couple of weeks. Wanted to mention this real quick. Uh, through iTunes, we got a uh, five-star rating and a comment from Jenny Hypes. Uh, she said, great way to stay up to date over lunch. Thanks, guys, for putting the show together. It's tough to find professional development for K-12 that doesn't cost an arm and a leg and doesn't require me to be out of the district while things pile up. I love that I can sit in on your conversation while I'm at lunch. Thanks so much for sharing your knowledge and skills. This is what technology is all about. Well, Jenny, thank you so much. I hope you are enjoying the show and enjoying whatever it is you are eating now for your lunch. But I really do appreciate you taking the time to give us that comment and I will encourage others, please do, go on iTunes, uh, give us a rating, uh, leave a comment. It just helps to spread the word. It helps others be aware of the podcast and it helps us to know that you're appreciating it. Uh, so thank you. We also got an email from Seth Lavender uh, he is the network administrator for George Washington High School in Charleston, West Virginia. And Seth wrote us to say, just wanted to stop in and let you know I love the show. Can't wait for future episodes. It has been great to hear what is going on in Ohio schools. I have already gained much useful information from your efforts. Thank you. And thank you, Seth. I really, again, appreciate the feedback. That really does help us a lot to know how people are enjoying the show. Um, if you want to give us some feedback, there are several different ways to get in touch with us. Certainly start with the website, that is www.thestateoftech.org. You'll find all kinds of information there. There you're going to find uh, the episodes in audio and video format. You're going to find all the show notes, and that's important because we may mention things quickly here in the show, and the show notes will have the links you need to get to the things that we refer to in the episode. And a lot of times we just can't fit everything in, so there's more information in the show notes than what we might be able to mention in the show. But then there's other things there as well, other resources on the website. Uh, if you want to send us an email, that would be fantastic, like Seth did. That is thestateoftech at gmail.com. If you would like to uh, give us a call, you, we have a, a Google Voice number set up. You can call and leave a message there that we could use on the show, perhaps. Uh, it is 513-318-TECH, T-E-C-H. T -E -C -H. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter. We are simply at the State of Tech. And we now have a Google Plus page as well. So search for us on the Google Plus page or simply go to our stateoftech.org site and follow the link there to our Google Plus page so that you can circle us up in Google Plus as well. Um, that's pretty much going to wrap it up 
for this show. We do want to let you know that our next episode coming up is going to be on December 17th. And I'm really excited about this episode personally. Uh, this one is about using technology in math. Now, many of you may know I started out my career as a math teacher. I was a 7th and 8th grade math teacher for seven years before moving over into technology, which I've been in now for the last 13 years. Um, and so using technology in math is something I always did and always loved. And I'm really excited to see what people have been doing around the state of Ohio and other states around here uh, to come up with new ways to integrate technology into math. And that's what that whole episode's about. We will be highlighting some of the neatest tools and resources and techniques for using technology to teach mathematics. Now, as always, before every episode, we always have a survey that you can fill out to give us feedback so there's still time Go to the website, you'll see the link there for the survey, the pre-episode survey for technology and math. If you are a math teacher or know somebody who is, please pass that on so you guys can fill out that survey and give us more useful information to share on the podcast. So, for Sean, Eric, and myself, and a special thanks to uh, Leslie Fisher for joining us today, uh, this has been The State of Tech, and we will